everlasting joy. And the King of Glory shall come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord of hosts is the King of Glory. Let's give the Lord a hand come to pray. Let us pray. Turn to God our fathers. Once again, we come before you, Lord. Give your name, honor, praise, and glory. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings of the day. Now, Lord, we invite thy presence into here. Lord, have thy own way. Move back your Holy Spirit. We be ever careful to give your name all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're here to say amen again. Amen. We have the Tabernacle Baptist Church in Chesterfield with us all today. We have a powerful preacher in the house today. We have a powerful song today. So we can lay in uh, two selections uh, as they will come. Amen. Amen.
they can be preaching from, but it talks about unity. Psalms 133, the King James Version of the Bible says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded blessings, even life evermore. Amen. 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 We have another pastor in the house, and I'm not going to invite him. We have the newly installed pastor of the Rocky Mount Baptist Church. The Reverend Porter is having my action to come on up. Uh, he's a new night. Man of God, and we're going to ask him to come on up here and lead us in prayer. He says, uh, uh, they went to school together in union. Uh, they were a little bit before me, but these brothers, they're tight and they're classmates. So let's give the pastor some love as he comes. And let's go. And lead it up.
every night tomorrow is out. Amen. Um, I hope that something has already been said and done that made you feel welcome. But just in case you don't, we're welcome to come on Sunday service at 1130. You can come to Bible study on Wednesday nights. You can come to noonday prayer on Wednesdays. So anytime I want to go, we Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Who's going to be the great soul that's going to respond to the welcome? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I bring you back. Thank you for that wonderful welcome. And on behalf of Tabernacle Baptist Church, Chesterfield, and our loved pastor, Reverend Justin House, we accept your beautiful welcome. We mm -hmm. felt the warmth and love when we walked in the door and yeah, about four or five mm -hmm. different people came by and asked us, do you need anything? Do you need anything? So when the young lady took us to the choir room, I said, you know, you all are going to spoil us. So, you know, <laughs> we, we might have to come back. <laughs> but thank you for your, your worship. Thank you for your prayers. And let us all say, thank God together. Thank, thank God. God. Amen. 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 Am
spirit that was being was intended to be given, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you will bless us immensely, Heavenly Father. As we give out of our hearts and out of our desires, Heavenly Father, we ask that you will keep your hands upon us. Let your favor rain on us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
don't feel like moving. There is something about the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 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 Amen. I don't know about you, but you can't you can't receive if you don't come expecting. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You can't receive if you don't come expecting. And I promise you, I didn't come to play. Amen. I came to preach. Amen. So I pray that you came to hear and came to pray to God. Thank God for the partnership of this amazing branch of Zion. Amen. We thank God for your hospitality. Amen. We thank God um, for your friendship. Amen. Um, thank God for um, the work that we've already done. We had leadership conferences together. Amen. Amen. Um, we thank God for amen, your presence, your leadership, your ministry. Um, I am uh, a virtual fan of your church. Amen. Um, I feel like all in the Amen. Women's ministry. Going to luncheons and stuff, pastor all over the place serving, amen. Uh, and we thank God for the partnership, amen, of, of, of you. And we are excited to share with you amen. on this night of revival. Yes. Thank God. Amen. For our music ministry, amen. Yes. Thank God for um, our music leader. I thank God for our leaders that are in the congregation. I thank God um, for our leaders that are here serving. Amen. Those that are serving at the door. Amen. Yes. Those that are serving through your presence. Yes. It means a lot to have you in the house. Yes. Amen. I uh, thank God for you. Amen. TBC Chesterfield is excited. Um, this is the first time, amen, they have uh, rolled down through. Amen. <laughs> and new coach, amen. So they were excited about the opportunity to come. Amen. amen. And the coach looks good. Amen. <laughs> Man, I, I had an extra smile on my face, pull it up, and see it, amen. TBC uh, represented at the, at the front of the parking lot, amen. At the front of the parking lot, amen. Um, I thank God for my friend and my brother, my classmate, 2013 of the same, D. Whit Proctor School of Theology, the newly installed pastor, as Pastor Hill has already said. Um, can we give some love to Pastor Glenn, amen. Pastor Glenn is pastoring his home church. Yes. Welcome home, amen. <laughs> Welcome home, amen. Good to have you in the county, amen. Thank God for you. Oh, I thank God for my beautiful wife, amen. 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 And last but certainly not least, as we celebrate um, the partnership of this branch of Zion. Um, and our church. Can we celebrate Pastor Hill? Amen. Y'all know me. Um, I thank God for friendship. He, and he, he shared it. Um, Psalm 133 is a powerful scripture. Amen. It talks about unity. And I thank God for unity and friendship of your pastor um, growing up being born and raised on the north side, amen, on the other side of the bridge, on the other side of James River, amen. amen. Um, it was hard um, to move um, to the south side, um, leaving friendship, leaving familiarity. Y'all know the close brotherhood and sisterhood, the ministers I have on the north side, but God has blessed me with a friend, amen. amen. And your pastor, Amen. 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 Amen.
doing good. All right. All right. That being said, I'm going to call the attention on the night to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Um, I want to share from the New King James Version on tonight as we share beginning with verse 30. Luke chapter 10. Beginning with verse 38. As you find it, Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse 38. Um, special thanks and shout out to Pastor Dave, amen, that um, always gives a blessing and knows exactly what Pastor House needs, amen, even in revival. So I thank God for uh, ministry and ministry partnership. God is good. When you finally say amen, amen. if you haven't found it, say hold up. Amen. We're family here, so if you take too long, somebody in your family is going to say, hurry up. You should know what the book of Luke is, the gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse 38. New King James Version shares this with clarity. Now it happened as they went. They, he entered a certain village, a certain woman named Martha, welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister named Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Yeah. Sounds like church folks. Yeah. They tapping on you to the Lord. <laughs> Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Verse 41 says, And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. God, continue to have your way. Provide clarity of thought. And I pray not to be a distraction of your will and your way tonight through your word. I need your power. I need your inspiration. I need your presence. And I pray that your, your presence provides what is needed during this moment. I give you praise in advance. Yeah. I give you glory for what you're about to do. Yes. Have thine own way. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say together, amen. 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 Verse 41, and Jesus answered and said to her, Mama, Mama, you are worried and troubled about many things. But verse 42 says, one thing is needed. Everybody say one thing. One thing. And Martha has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. With your prayers, I want to preach from the subject as the Holy Spirit shall guide, caught between your priorities and their expectations. All right. Caught between your priorities and their expectations. Brothers and sisters, have you ever been caught in the rat race of life? Can I get a witness? All right. Rat race of being uh, sick and tired of being sick and tired of fed up and being fed up and caught up with the busyness of life that pushes you to a place where you're always rushing from one thing to the other. Yes. Every time you try to find a little time Little, a little peace, y'all right here, a little peace of time, or a peace that seems as though life pulls at you. Y'all yes. been there? Yes. I'm trying to um, sneak a nap, but then you get a text message or a phone call trying to 
um, sneak to the corner of whatever peaceful place that you have in your house. Yeah, yeah. And when you sit there, somebody cracks the door open. Yeah. Y'all ain't hearing that. Yeah. Even at work, you may have a personal place where you spend time with God. You've got to steal away to ask God, watch this, to give you clarity and peace, not to go off up in there, up in there. Amen. And be the first to not omit, to not exclude places of peace, places of peace. Y'all ain't hearing me. Where God is, where God should be, I believe, are the biggest targets for the enemy to attack. Check out the text. The text where the Lord was had attacks. Y'all ain't hearing me. Had the enemy attacked. And may I suggest that the enemy attacks in many different forms. Yes. The enemy can attack in people, places, and things. Yes. Which means you can't put the enemy in a box. You can't suggest that the enemy will show up dressed in red with horns coming out of your head. The enemy has a way of seeping in where you are, wherever you are. The enemy can seep into the car when you're trying to get your praise on. The enemy can seep into your worship when you're trying to focus on God. The enemy can seep into a meeting when you're trying to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. The enemy can seep into relationships when you have the desire to go higher and higher, but somehow, some way, the enemy seeps into every conversation. The enemy seeps in yes. when you wake up in the morning. The enemy tries to kill, steal, and destroy yes. the love that you have. But is there anybody that can say, God is bigger than the enemy? Yes. Which means, if God is bigger than the enemy, you have victory. And even before the distraction shows up, you have to start speaking to the enemy. Of control, you got to start talking to the circumstance and tell the circumstance that the God you serve has the ability to give you peace that surpasses all understanding. You can get shot through the struggle and has the ability to calm any storm that may come your way. Can I be witness? It is here, I believe, that the text suggests to us on tonight that we got to. Getting caught in the rat race. And I know, um, even like my rain that doesn't like rodents, I could uh, fill in the blank with rat to the human race. We are running this race called life. And sometimes life can push you to a place where you feel like giving up. Life yes. can push you to a place where you are carrying the weight of the world yes. and you feel like giving up. I'm still suggesting stop getting caught up in the busyness of life. Life can frustrate you, especially life in the in-between. Check out the text. The title is Caught Between Your Priorities and Their Expectations. I believe that this text presents tension that is clearly practical to the daily expectations that we live with. Every day we get up, there are expectations where you got to show up someplace at a certain time. Every day we get up, we have expectations that people put on us, that we should act a certain way, that we should do a certain thing, that we should dress a certain way, that we should speak a certain way. But is there anybody that can say at some point or another, I've got to take a step back and yes. be centered, restock, and even for our purpose on tonight, revive myself for a place to the help of God to allow me to focus on the right thing and not the wrong thing, because the wrong thing will take you out. The wrong thing will push you to a place where you start depending on things that are inconsistent. The wrong thing will push you to a place where you cannot pray. The wrong thing will push you to a place where you can't
there are unspec expectations. And may I suggest that expectations are sometimes unrealistic. Yes. Pastor Glenn, yes. you know job descriptions. No, that's right. Job descriptions that have a full-time expectation yeah. with a part-time pay.
going to focus more on the look on the outside than getting right on the inside and telling God that he's worthy for all that he's done. Grace is a gift. Y'all ain't here. Grace is a gift that we don't deserve. But yes, sir, because the grace is given, you should never take grace for granted. And it right. you don't take big grace for granted, you should not be able to keep your mouth shut. Rejoicing the 70 returns 
full of joy because they have been able to cast out demons. Jesus tells them to rejoice rather than, than because their names are written in heaven. Success, as the text says, may evade them tomorrow. Trouble may come on the next day, yes. but their salvation grace is secure. Say with me. Verses 21 through 24 speaks of spiritual sense. It's got to make sense, but you will not make sense of it if you don't remain focused on God. Jesus thanks his father that his blessing is on those who come to him as children rather than those who are learned in the world sense. Are there any honest folk that can say, I thank God for what I've learned practically. I've been to the school of hard knocks. But I also thank God for the word of God that has renewed my strength. And I embrace what Romans 12 says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. You only hear me. Spiritual sense. He stresses the oneness between father and son and underlines how blessed people are who have to come to trust him. Verses 25 through 28 speaks of commands to first love God and second love your neighbor as yourself. Verses 29 through 37 shares the importance of compassion for a neighbor's needs. The caring Samaritan helped those in need and those hurt from unfortunate circumstances. Now we dig into priority practice. Yo, honestly, can I rewind? Go right back. I promise you I'm trying to make sense of this. At the beginning of Luke chapter 10, there was a missionary mindset where Jesus sent out 70 disciples two by two, and they are told that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. It goes on to say that they came back rejoicing, thinking about what the Lord has done through them. And now we are at the house of Mary and Martha, and we are arguing about work and worship. Y'all ain't here. You are encouraged to work, but the Lord says to you plainly, don't ever allow your work to distract you from your worship. Here it is. We dig into this priority practice when Mary is faced with overburdened and distracted business of Martha. Let me say it again. Mary is faced with the burdens and distractions of business of Martha. And now Martha has good intentions, may I suggest, but she misses what is needed most. Have you ever been there when yes. everybody wants you to do everything, but sometimes they forget that they need to have a little talk with Jesus? Yes. And now and then, you've got to take a pause in this rat race called life, and you've got to talk to God. They may not have the answer, but Jesus will fix it after a while. But you can do a whole thing through Christ who strengthens you. He may not know who to turn to, but if there is anybody that can say, the Lord is my shepherd. that I, again, I, I've got to say it, that here in the text, two 
sisters are arguing instead of spending time with God. Here it is. Here is the solution. I believe that Mary um, shares with us where Martha chooses to bust, Mary chooses to sit. All right. I mean, playing to you. People get on the nerves. Uh huh. Just sit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think the right side got that guy. When you get stressed out and the busyness of life overwhelms you, sit down. Yeah. All right. and give you something real deep, my brothers and sisters, but here, this text finally suggests to us that the solution for us to overcome conflict is to prioritize responsibility. Yes. Yes. The solution for us to overcome conflict is to take pride in your position. There are some seasons when you got to run, and there are some seasons when you got to sit down. Yes. Yes. When you got to figure it out, and there are some seasons where God is reminding you that He's already worked it out. Yes. There's a blessing in a place of stillness. There's a blessing when you can serve and sacrifice. But I believe here in the text, this text plainly suggests to us that we can never be so busy for doing for others that you don't have any energy or time to. With the Lord. Is there anybody that can say, I just came to hang out in church on a Thursday night yes. because I want to tell the Lord, thank you. Yes. I just came to revival on Thursday night to remind the Lord that I am the, if even I, if I'm the only one, I'm going to get a praise for what yes. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. 
God, not just for writing sermons, not just for Bible study, not just for punching the clock and getting over and just saying that I, I prayed to the Lord, now I'm going over my day. But to spend real quality time with the Lord. Yes. I think everybody can take something from this. So we thank God for this word on today. We give God honor and praise for this word today. And he was talking about things and you know, my, my brother, and he's the reason why I have the bug. The bug is I have the golf bug. This brother has helped my golf game. And you know, and then sometimes he look at me, he just shake his head like, you know, wow, you know, what but he's the reason why I want to play golf. But you know, when I go and play golf, and sometimes when we go and play golf, it's so peaceful. And, and we always get, we talk a lot of stuff, but we always talk about the Word of God. Amen. We always talk about what you preach. Look at it from this way, look at it from, from that way. Just by him being my friend, uh, he has broadened my preaching just by listening to him. He's a powerful preacher. And I thank him for his friendship. I thank him for his love. Yeah. Although he joined the role of fraternity. Joined the role of fraternity, but I thank him anyway. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the man of God. Amen. Tabernacle Baptist, we thank you all for coming. Uh in the land for the God's work. To the Christian school. The Lord's work and his marvelous in our sight. We thank you all. Let's give some love to this choir. Let's do business. Reverend, appreciate you. We just praise God. I'm like, I don't even want to go anywhere. But we got to go. Uh, we're going to let uh, uh, for First Lady, uh, Honorable Judge, and, and Reverend, and all of that. We want to thank you uh, for being here today as well. Amen. Let's give us She kind of likes this. She wears a lot of hats, too. I would not be remiss to uh, talk about my wife. Thank you, babe, for being with me all day. Our daughter is in the house of the dairy is here. My auntie Barbara is here. And for more about the church, I thank you for your fellowship. I thank you all for uh, just uh, pouring into me and for praying for me and just for being who you are in my life. We give God honor and praise for all of you all. Amen. Let us all stand all over the sanctuary. Pastor House is going to uh, dismiss us in his own way. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord tonight. Amen. For what is going on tonight. For this time of the week. Thank you all for being amen. Amen. Y'all know when you get the preaching of the mic back. Amen. I can start preaching again. Amen. I'm going to leave you with this. Um, and, and literally hit for clarity after sitting down. And notice that was the instruction. I believe a lot of us can't hear from God because we're too busy being busy. Amen. And we don't just sit at him. Right? Don't, listen, when people, when people ask, what you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm just busy. Sit <laughs> down. Tell me I'm busy. Right? There's a revelation to that. And I'm sharing, I'm sharing this with you. And I, I pray that it blesses the pastors, preachers in the house, the choir members, Musicians, the ushers, and here's here's the reality of the full transparent moment. I have, through the years, been so caught up and committed to serving the church that I have lost sight of serving my family first. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And almost to the point where I resented my family saying, can you just slow down? Come on now. <laughs> my family. Imagine that. My family cares about me enough to ask me to slow down. And I'm, I'm so laser focused trying to help God's people. Now let me be honest. God's people have treated me the worst in this life. I'm on the God people church. Right? But 
but I pray that you find balance in your life. Yeah. Brother and sister, pastor, preacher, deacon, trustee, son, daughter, I pray that you find balance in your life to not allow church to kill you. Yeah. Sit with God. Let God provide the revelation. God will fix it. God will work it out. You're not Superman. You're not Superwoman. Jesus will work it out. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I, I praise God, but I promise you, I, I've been in some low places and closer than what you think. I ain't talking about 2023. I'm talking about 2024. Where I've almost lost my mind. Thank God for my family. Thank God for my family. I'm saying tonight, I'm still here. I'm still here and I'm still family. Thank you, God, for what the Lord has done. So my prayers are for you, Pastor Hill. Yeah, we, we talk about it and, and we 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 joke with each other, but I, again, I thank God for the friendship of your pastor that has helped. We help each other. Amen. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Please know I'm, I'm here for you. I'm here. I, mean, I ain't not just in church. I'm here for you. All right? Sit down. Yeah. <laughs> I, I pulled his coattail when he was talking that he about to pull mine.